Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about making sure times are entered in 15-minute increments. We're going to force users to enter times in 15-minute increments with a validation rule. Today's question comes from Sharon from Puyallup, Washington. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. One of my Access Expert students. Sharon says, I'm creating a time card in Microsoft Access. How do I restrict time entry to 15-minute increments? I was hoping to enter a validation rule that warns them they must enter time in 15-minute increments and let the user fix it instead of automatically rounding. I don't know how to structure the validation rule. Well, let's take a look how to do this. I'm going to take my blank template. You can download this from my website. It's free. There's a link down below. Let's create a table. Create table design. I'll throw an ID in here, auto number. And let's just throw a date time in here. That's a date time field. I'll save this as my date T. Okay, nice and simple. And if I come over here to put dates in, I can put dates and times in, right? 1 1 20 at 6 32 p.m. Nothing's stopping you. Okay. Now, now validation rules are right down here and you can use validation rules to restrict this data entry and if they violate that rule pop up a message that's the violation text I've got another video on how basic validation rules work I'll put a link to it down below go watch that first if you've never used a validation rule before you can do things like make sure a customer's credit limit doesn't go over five thousand dollars and things like that now let's start off easy let's say I want the user to type in whole minutes no seconds are allowed okay let's go to the validation rule design Validation rule. Now there are functions to determine the day, month, year, hours, minutes, and seconds of a particular date time field. To make sure the user enters no seconds in, that means seconds of that date time has to be zero. So second, and notice there's a second function. See, it says second, then a time. Put a time value in here. Now our field name is date time. So put in date time like that. Close parentheses, but be careful, because as soon as I tab off it, watch what happens. It puts it in quotes. This is one of those times where you have to make sure you put the brackets around your field name. I want the field date time, not the word date time. Okay? So second date time equals zero. That's my validation rule. So you can enter whatever time you want, whatever date time you want, as long as the seconds are zero. All right, let's save this. It says data integrity rules have changed. Existing data may not be valid. In other words, it's going to have to check and make sure that all the data in the table matches that validation rule. All right, but now let's go back to table view here. And if I change this to, let's say, 633, okay, that's good. If I change it to 633 and, not a W, and two seconds, look at that. One or more values are prohibited by the validation rule. Okay, so that's how you set that up. Now, Sharon wants this to be in 15 minute increments. So that means the seconds have to be zero and the minutes have to be either 0, 15, 30, or 45. How do we do that? Well, just like the second function, there is a minute function and an hour function, okay? And a day function and a month function. There's all kinds of them. I cover all these in my class, by the way, in my Access Expert 11 class. I'll put a link to that down below too. So second has to be zero and minute of date time has to also be zero. Let's leave it at that for now. This will force it to be whole hours. Okay? Because second has to be zero and minute has to be zero. Save that. Data integrity rules have changed. Say yes. Now look, it says existing data violates the new setting for the validation rule. In other words, you got data in your table that doesn't work with that. All right, just cancel this. Now flip back over here. And watch this. If I change this to 634, it yells at me. Okay, but if I change this to 6 o'clock now, I'm good. All right, second is zero, minute zero. So now we just tweak this to we say here, minute is zero and minute is 15 and minute is 30. But in, in programming terms, that's an or condition. Okay, so this has to be true and this has to be true or a bunch of other options in here. So we're going to do this. Open parentheses, right? We're going to copy this to our clipboard right here, Control-C. So we have to retype it every time. 
all right? Or minute is 15, or minute is 30, or minute is 45, close parentheses. All right, I can zoom in and show you all of these here so you can see it. There it is, nice and big. Okay, second is zero, and this whole thing, and this whole thing is minute is zero, or minute is 15, or minute is 30, or minute is 45. And if they violate that, the validation text pops up, makes something a little nicer than what access pops up, right? Time has to be entered in 15 minute increments or intervals or whatever you want to say. Save it. Yes. Let's open it back up again. Here we go. All right. Next record, 115. Good. And if you want military time, you can format that as well. Right, design view in your format here, right? Just HH colon NN. That's all you need. That's short time. All right, save it. I'm used to just typing in the format codes. Okay, if the if the date portion doesn't matter to you. All right, 330, good. 1331. Oh, time has to be entered in 15 minute increments. Okay, got to fix it. 1345, good. And there you go. That's how you set up that validation rule. Hope that answers your question, Sharon. Want to learn more about this 15 increment stuff? Well, Sharon didn't want to automatically round, but I do. So in the extended cut, I'm going to show you how to round the start times down and the end times up. This is handy if you're billing a customer, right? If you start work at 3.02 and you finish at 3.58, well, they're getting billed from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Okay, we'll use the after update event. And we'll use the time serial function. Now, all that's in the members only extended cut, 11 minutes long. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. And there's getting close to 100 of them now. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.